Everybody, we have a problem from a document produced by Thomas uh, J. Mildorf uh, back in, I believe it was 2005. It's been a while back. And it's the title of the document is Olympiad Inequalities. It talked about AMGM, arithmetic mean, geometric mean, Cauchy Schwartz, Holder, Muirhead inequalities, triangle inequalities, and various other inequalities uh, to help people prepare for the various Olympiads like the SMO, the IMO, the BMO. Now, what we're dealing with today is we're trying to prove something about a polynomial and inequality, namely that P evaluated 1 over X is greater than or equal to 1 over P of X under these initial conditions. Now, the, the, the coefficients of the polynomial are non-negative. That's what this means right here. Uh, I is equal to um, zero. And again, in English, you would just say the coefficients were non-negative. And those of you that are familiar with Cauchy-Schwartz uh, know that polynomials work with them quite well because if you think about the structure of a polynomial, you can think of the coefficients as a vector, just a vector of scalars, and then the, also the powers of x is another vector. You can dot them together, and that's really part of what the big operation, the Cauchy-Schwartz, is the dot product. Now, uh, we got this initial condition. We need to spend a little bit of time on it because it'll, it'll come in handy later on. Um, this statement right here, p at 1 is greater than or equal to 1 over p at 1, that intimates certainly that p evaluated at 1 squared. Okay. And I may be going to a little bit too much trouble right here, but if you multiply through by p of 1, you get this statement. And p of 1 squared greater than 1 certainly implies that p of 1 is uh, greater than or equal to 1. Okay, so p evaluated at 1. Again, it's probably required, very, uh, I probably spent too much time on that. But in any event, we do know that p evaluated at 1 is greater than or equal to 1. All right. Now, also trivially, p at 1 is just the sum of these uh, non-negative coefficients, okay? If you substitute 1 here, one everywhere you see an x, you just get that p of 1 is equal to the sum of the coefficients. Now, we're going to use the Cauchy-Schwartz, like I mentioned, and think of the a sub i and the b sub i connected to these coefficients. And now, so the first thing we're going to do, since we have an inequality of this form right here, p at 1 over x greater than or equal to, 1 over p of x, that's what we're trying to prove for all x, all real x. Okay, we'll write that product down, p of x times p of 1 over x. And that's, I try to be careful with the notation right here. This is p of x times p of 1 over x, this statement right here. But notice here that you get, you get a dot product out of this if you just take the square roots of the individual elements. Uh, notice right here that we have a bunch of squared terms, right? Okay. Now that uh, that would be correspond to this side. You see, we have a sum of a bunch of squared terms, and here we have a sum of a bunch of squared terms. All right. Well, that would correspond to this side, this side right here of the inequality, right, with uh, two summations of, of of squared terms. Okay. So that's exactly this piece right here. Now we split it apart. When Mildorf did this, he just went, he just wrote it down and went straight to here. I, I wanted to show these steps here. Now, uh, if you take a look at what's going on here, what makes this fly is just a very simple truth uh, that the square root of any type of expression that's real valued and non-negative, okay, squaring and square rooting are inverse operations, right? I, I'm using question mark intentionally. It's just any expression it's non-negative, right? So the, uh, the, square, uh, the square of the square root of question mark is question mark. Again, where question mark can be a scalar, it can be a variable expression, whatever, okay? Now, so you see, that's what happened exactly right down here on these lines, okay? Uh, we have a sub i, b sub i as a dot product, and an entire sum is being squared. That's exactly... Uh, that's exactly uh, what this piece is down here. Okay, y'all, if you want to, I'll just fill in a few of these. A sub 1, B sub 1 would be this object right here. B sub 1 is the object directly above it, including the radical. This would be A sub 2, B sub 2 right here. Okay, and I'm sure you see that, but I'm just being sure. Because it was cumbersome to write all this down. Mil Again, Mildorf didn't do it. He just kind of whizzed right through it and said, he got right to this statement right here, which which gets to the result pretty quickly, okay? 
and then of course plus and so on, right? It goes on. All right, but in any event, uh, what happens here is the x sub n's, the x sub i's, and the one over x sub i's just cancel out all the way across. Okay, and so you're just left with a sub n, a sub n minus one all the way out to the constant term a sub naught, right? And that's kind of cool. I, I like that a lot. You see, because we already know quite a bit about all of this, um, we know that p of one, uh, p of one is the sum of the coefficients. We also know that p of one is greater than or equal to one, right? So this would be equal to. I'll just write it out here. Uh, this would be equal to p at one quantity square. But that's greater than or equal to one, right? And so um, what we have here is a very nice circumstance. What are we trying to prove? We're trying to prove that p evaluated one over x is greater than or equal to p one over p of x, one over the polynomial, right? And so you can see right here, we get we get it really quick. Uh, we have p of x. And again, y'all, I'm going right back to here. We have equality, equality, greater than or equal to equality, right? So that, that's a nice chain of, of uh, operations there. So we have P, um, okay, is greater than or equal to one, right? But again, let's flip, what are we trying to prove? You could prove any, any of the two, you could prove two statements here if you wanted to, but they wanted to show that P of one over X is greater than or equal to one over p of x. That could have been rewritten if you want to. But so if you divide through by p of x, if you divide through by uh, p of x, you get p uh, at one over x, p evaluated at one over x, okay, is uh, greater than or equal to one over p of x. And so this is the time to write down QED, quantum est demonstrandum. Thus we have demonstrated. So that's a QED time. And I think it's kind of neat, just uh, one initial condition kind of homogenize things or whatever language it is they used. And just that, that, that presence of an inequality uh, for X equals one uh, got the job done. Okay, so again, I hope I wrote down enough there to help. I probably said too much. I'm sorry all this was small. I tried to keep everything on one line. I hope it doesn't strain your eyes too much. But we proved what we set out to prove. And this is an Olympiad level sort of question. You know, I, I think it would be hard to figure it out in a timed environment. I know I wouldn't have. Uh, it's, it's, but it, it fits the Cauchy-Schwartz if you take a look at this formulation of Cauchy-Schwartz nicely. Now, I just wanted to... Just, just to be clear, I don't. In case I didn't get the point across that well, this two right here literally is this two right here. Okay. And then all of these squares that you see right here, okay, uh, are this these squares right here. Okay. So you see these squares right here. Okay, line up with this, right? And you see how the, it's keeping the, the inequality where you got greater than or equal to right here and you got the greater than the large side of the inequality right here. So you can see everything is cool. Uh, we're doing good. And uh, that's that, folks. I hope you enjoyed it.